Be warned, as a Galactus pool is in sight, it's another fan made delight by Nick Koss. We look into that. When will Battlegrounds return? You might want to wait a little while. The Thronebreaker deals, which caused a stir in a positive way, turn out to be a little bit of a letdown. Compensations on the way, let's talk about that. Daredevil Hell's Kitchen's non damaging debuff leading to attack rating scaling may be bugged. God, that was a bit of a mouthful, and much, much more. And of course, we've got week four of Eternity of Pain. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the MCN for Wednesday. A little show of lots of different information as well as updates to situations from around the community. Make sure as well to hit the like button and subscribe with post notifications on all because it really helps support the channel. Thank you. And now on to a different Richard with a word from this video's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Control Alt Ego. There's a toilet here. Control Alt Ego is a first person sci fi immersive simulator game. The adventure starts you off as Ego, which is like a god, discovering more about the spaceship you inhabit. In a unique twist, you can body a bug, which is also a robot, and also take on the form of Ego to take on obstacles and enemies. Throughout the game, you will need to grow Ego form to complete tasks and top up your bug with batteries to improve motion. Don't get too attached to your bug as they don't have the largest of lifespans, and you'll need to find more as you progress on. So, if you like retro, Intro, sci-fi, robots, first-person shooter genres, with puzzle solving and futuristic story narratives to it, then you'll like Control Alt Ego, and it could be the game for you. Go and check out the link in the description and pick up the game today, as it's just launched. I just got through a new area and I'm being attacked. I'm being attacked by a mum, which is not good. Take that mum. The, the, the robots, that is. Boom. Ah, oh, what's that evil eye? Oh, shoot the evil eye then. As I said, go and check out the game in the link in the description. There's a lot going on here in this spacey, god, egoey world that we live in. And finally, don't forget the discount of 40% off to celebrate the game's launch. Now, let's kick off the Wednesday news with a little bit of micro news. Micro news is just quick little tidbit stories, information that's important to players. On the subject of Karina's challenge, which I'm personally looking forward to doing, Revolution. Uh, the question was about Act 6 ones and will they be returning? The answer is yes. The return of Karina's challenges of Act 6 is still on pace to meet the most recent timeline I provided. Most up to date information implies that we are hoping to have these re-implemented during the first week of August. So good news for those that want to go back and do some of those Act 6 Karina's challenges, including myself. The second quick bit of information is Battlegrounds. Now, I'm sure a lot of people really enjoy Battlegrounds. Hundreds of thousands of people got involved with Battlegrounds, which is good for the, like the health of Marvel Contest of Champions as a game. But uh, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people want to know when it's coming back. It's coming back or looking to be scheduled to return back in early this fall. Next up, and Nick Koss has done it again. This time, a Galactus pool with a Lady Deadpool having a little bit of an argy-bargy with him. Love it. So yeah, this is really cool to see. Nick does an absolutely amazing job with creating these particular characters. Make sure to go and check it out in the link in the description down below. Honestly, panda pool as well. Did you see that? There is a panda pool right there. Love it. Honestly, there's a, there's, 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 a, there's a duck pool. There's a wolverine pool as well. But let's face it, like, Nick does an amazing job with uh, creating the inspiration and also the funny things. I mean, look at that. Do you see that? The, um, the little kind of like how the duck there, like the, the duck pool. That is honestly like a nice little detail with the heart kind of broken right there. Oh, that honestly, like the, the little attention to detail that Nick does with uh, these particular animations is just what makes so much more. It's so enjoyable watching uh, these these kind of like little vignettes and animations. And make sure to go and check out Nick in the link in the description down below for his fanta fantastic Galactus ball and all the amazing stuff and work that he does on his channel. Okay, next up, we've got a bit more of a technical based overview on Daredevil's Hell's Kitchen. As a lot of you know, when the champion was buffed, it possessed this really kind of cool addition that uh, it would have an attack rating for each non-damaging debuff on Daredevil's Hell's Kitchen and the bonus decreases by 5% for each additional uh, debuff. So it always brings up a, an interesting point as to are all champions in the game running as normal? I mean, we had the, the problem with Sasquatch a little while ago. We had the problems with Kingpin when it came to some damage numbers, which Command were like, mm, I don't think there's anything wrong there, but it kind of looked like it was. So a lot of the time you, you kind of look at these situations like, well, raised eyebrow, the rock in uh, 
WWE, do you smell what Kabam are cooking? To very much get down to business with kind of, uh, you know, explaining a bit more of what the heck is actually going on, what the heck you're talking about. Essentially, when you're playing your dead, Daredevil Hell's Kitchen, you want to see debuffs on you, non-damaging debuffs, and then you want to feel like the non-damaging debuffs are kind of creating that increase of attack rating, which is exactly what it's meant to do. In the UK, we have Romso. It does exactly what it says on the tin which is what you'd hope from your champions in Marvel Contest of Champions. And in a scenario like this, where there's two debuffs currently active, and you kind of go, okay, well, that's going to be some nice scalable damage based on that particular narrative. Now, uh, the the what's pointed out in this particular piece of footage that we just saw and the continuation of the video is indeed that with zero debuffs, there was 131 damage. With one debuff, there was 153, so sort of went up. Two debuffs, 152 damage. Well, it could be extra, you know, one extra debuff. That That's the thing that mitigates that percentage reduction, but should it be that much? Uh, three debuffs, 151 damage. Okay, well that's kind of, uh, it's, is that going down and then going up correctly? Four debuffs, 168. Five debuffs, 167. And six debuffs, 166. So you see something looks to be working uh, but is it meant to be more potent than just seeing these kind of damage numbers here and there could be more to like the rng role of like the numbers side of things and other stuff and other piddly crap which you know is the over technical thing so at times like this when you know evidence and information is being thrust in kabam's way it does need to be looked into there's definitely need for an alarm over the situation and kabam to look into this as uh, here's a good example, this particular player is putting 402 hits. Actually, uh, by the end of it, puts in close. I think it's like to 700 hits. Uh, and if you're doing 700 hits with a five star, 565, yeesh. Uh, so the interesting thing about this, is the player says, uh, there's definitely an issue with Sticks Apprentice and the way that Rage Benefits works in that mode. Did a test with a five star rank five max Sig on a team with just Kingpin and no boost, not running. Um, SM, which I assume is Suicide Masteries. Uh, in the end, I was doing 50 points of damage. Think there's a minimum floor on the light and 78 for a medium. Just doing medium, light, 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 light. Combos along with Kingpin Synergy to gain rage on blocks. I gave up after 700 hits as he was hitting like a two star. And that's not exaggeration. As you can see from the image, uh, Six Apprentice is definitely bugged and needs investigation. So uh, there's plenty of evidence here to kind of like um, to pinpoint what the heck is going on here? It's it's very odd. So on the 24th, so three days ago, Kabam's have said we pass this on to the team to look at. And is there any follow-up questions? And I just hope that there's kind of like a, an answer to it. It definitely feels like something's a bit off with that particular champion. There are people out there that do enjoy Daredevil's House Kitchen. And I would obviously like to see what Kabam have to say about this. And whether or not, you know, there's a fix in sight. Because that's, um, that's a lot of hits. Not to be knocking out an opponent, and especially with a 565, that's kind of disgusting, man. <laughs> really, really bad. Now we move on to our big dissection, and that is all about Thronebreaker daily deals and Cavalier Nexuses. Oh, do you know what? It's been, uh, how long has it been? I think it's like four months since I had my kind of um, big coverage of constantly, which then people start complaining about in comment sections. Oh, you talk about the Cavalier Nexuses too much, and it's like, oh, I, oh, I don't speak about it. Oh, don't speak about it, to be burnt down uh, for, for kind of like mentioning it now about this particular deal. But there's some good things, and there's some bad things. Good things out of things, and the good things out of way is that once you buy, which you've got in the in-game stuff at the moment, for those that do spend in-game, you can get the Thronebreaker daily deals. They've moved on from the Cavalier one. Well, the Cavalier one's still there, but it's, uh, it's now you can buy all three. Um... It's up to you whether or not you want to get all three. I personally would not, but that's down to you. Uh, at the end of the day, you get stamps, okay? That's the new thing that you grab is a stamp. Uh, do you get that as a cavalry? You do actually get it as a cavalry. Do you get it lower than that? Yes, you get it as, a, as the Grandmaster one. Okay, good. But uh, yeah, you're able to take your stamps. You're able to get um, stamped for some, you know, some decent stuff down the line. The Thronebreaker stamp collect card selector, um, it, you, you're able to get some, some nice stuff from it whether or not you get the choice of the, the rank 4 six star materials, 10,000 six star shards or six star signature stone. That's nice. It's nice that it kind of grabs and additions for your choice. And then you've got with the Cavalier one, uh, Mythic Crystal, a tier five class catalyst fragment selector. Wow. 
uh, becoming Thronebreaker is definitely um, not as uh, premium as it used to be. So look, there's still some good stuff on. If you're spending in game and you want to feel that you're getting something kind of guaranteed and good at the end of it, then at least you got this kind of like um, stamp and this selector you can get um, as a result. So that's nice. It's nice to see something like that, like a frequent flyer miles, like a loyalty scheme stamp system, like, you know, 12 stamps, you get a free coffee at the coffee house or whatever. It's good to see that. It's nice that there's kind of like an added thing. And a lot of people actually, you know, were positive about it. Everyone was really kind of like, um, you know, well up for it. A lot of people bought it. Back on the 25th, it seemed to be very popular. People went for it, grabbed it. Great. But there were some problems. There was two problems. The first problem that was uh, addressed very, very early on was that uh, the Cav Crystal is, is and was missing. So that was missing at the point of purchase for some people, which you can see like there, like for the um, mutant one. It's missing, it's not there. A lot of complaints on that one. Um, but this was resolved from what I gather, uh, especially, I think it was like within certain hours that it was resolved. Wow, lots lots of people spend on this game. It's, it's surprising, a lot more than I thought. Um, especially a lot of people were kind of like interested. I'm just swiping through a load of kind of responses on things. Um, I mean, it's up to you if you want to spend on the game. Uh, I said, like, this this year I'm definitely not spending on it as I just don't think a lot of stuff that uh, Kabam have said they were going to deliver have delivered. So it's just a case. If you're not going to if you're not going to develop stuff, develop stuff, please. That would be nice. In any case, Kabam BK did say to this, because I will get to the point of this, uh, it said that uh, this is a bug and we're working on addressing the crystal. And it was out. People got, people got the crystal. In the end, that's fine. If you haven't received the crystal, go and do a support ticket. That's... The next thing, go and do a support ticket for it. But it did breed, breed, it did bring up uh, another issue, and the other issue was the uh, the drop rate being incorrect. Now, as I said, people like as you know, start of this year, I had a lot of problems with Kabam and the way they kind of like dealt with situations of the Cavalier Nexuses, and um, it's another thing as to like, look, they gave the wrong percentage um, for the. For the for the cutoffs for the um, as you can see here, like it's 1.5, um, as opposed to it being three percent. So that's that's annoying to kind of have this. We thought I think with the uh, you know uh, with the Cavalier one, I don't know if they did it with the Thronebreaker one because this is Cavalier a Cavalier player here. I don't know if this has gone into Thronebreaker. I want to assume potentially that it was the case that it's gone to people that are Thronebreaker as well, but uh, there's not been nothing to confirm firm that I need to kind of like chase that with people to find if that's the case but it may be that some people are getting some kind of like will get some kind of like compensation if you're curious this is what the drop rate should look like as you can see in, in game at the moment which you can check out for yourself three percent for a six star hero featured five star hero featured um five star hero uh 16 percent four star 31 percent three star 50 percent that is indeed a bit different to uh to what we just saw a moment ago especially with it being uh, 1.5%, 17.5%, uh, uh, 36%, and 50%. So it's it's a, it's very different. Either way, you know, you you kind of like would hope that that some compensation was coming your way, and it is going to be coming. So back on the 25th, so a couple of days ago, Kaban Mika said, "Hey, all, sorry for the late response, but we have confirmed that the drop rate should have been 3%, not 1.5%." which I think, you know, we all kind of got the inkling. We are going to correct this for the future offers and we'll be sending out the correct crystal, crystals to summoners that bought the crystal with the incorrect drop rate at some time in the near future. So if you want, I, I, I will be honest, I don't think you're going to get that as compensation anytime soon. So if you wait a week, maybe not. I, I, I would say that it, normally this process, it takes like one to two weeks, maybe even three weeks. Especially, or especially like a longer time as well. And now let's do arena predictions for Valkyrie and Storm. So based on some previous results for the featured and basic, I think we can get a good idea of where Storm and Valkyrie are going to end up. 
This is where I'm going with Valkyrie as a 6 star going to 205 mil. Based on previous arenas and uh, grind habits at the moment, that could be the case. Valkyrie is a 5 star going with 48 mil, which does tie into previous arenas for Gore and as well some other key new champions that came into the game. Storm as a 6 star, I'm going with 40 mil. It's maybe a bit out there, but it definitely puts it close to a recent 35 mil Namor arena. And with the, with the recent buffs to Storm, maybe there's an interest with grabbing that. But to be honest, it may even go close to a Sabertooth arena of 30 mil. So do, do look out for potentially 10 mil being taken off that particular 40 mil mark. And as well, 12 mil, I'm going with a 5 star version of Storm because... Let's face it, if you want a 5 star version, I can do 15 mil. And hey, get into that basic arena this weekend and grab yourself a nice little storm. Also, just before we go anywhere, thanks very much to everybody that supports the channel as a YouTube member and as a patron. You're on screen right now. And as well, those that support on twitch.tv slash richthemanlive. If you've got Amazon Prime, give a free Prime sub to myself. That would be very helpful. And I'll see you later on for a live stream where we'll be playing more MCOC and Fall Guys. So look out for that one. And check out some other content located on screen. Thanks very much to Control Alt Ego for sponsoring this video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.